Good morning, this is Dale with Sandpiper Pumps. Today we're going to show you the proper techniques to install an air end kit into an HDF2 unit. The HDF2 unit has a suction on the top, discharge on the bottom, a little bit different than the standard ball valve pump. This particular unit uses flat valves. At the same time, the techniques used on this particular unit will be similar to the HDF1 unit we have on display. This particular pump is a little bit smaller in design, still the same concept, important on torque procedures, the flat valve settings and other areas are very important in both units. The rebuild you are going to see is accurate in man, method, and machine. For video purposes, a lot of the work we are going to do is, will be condensed. If at any time you feel you need to stop to, to get caught up with what we were doing on the video, please feel free to do so. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts Wet end and air end kits provide a bill of material for the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warner Up video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. The pump we are going to use in this presentation is new and unused. We've actually just taken it off of our assembly line. A lot of the castings will come apart much easier and simpler than the pump you will be working on. The pump you have is probably come out of a system, has been used in an application, so your work will take extra time compared to what we will be spending on this particular unit. These are the tools being used for the HDF2, and while the sizes will change based on the 1 inch pump, the type will remain the same. 11 16 inch combination wrench, 5 8 inch combination wrench, 7 16 by half inch box end wrench, 12 inch pry bar, torque wrench, 18 inch flex handle breaker bar, 7 16 inch nut driver, dead blow hammer, 7 16 inch deep well socket, half inch deep well socket. 5 8 inch deep well socket, half inch socket, 5 8 inch socket, 11 16 inch socket, 3 8 inch hex bit socket, 3 inch extension, needle nose pliers. We're going to go ahead and get started disassembling our HDF2. For ease of disassembly purposes, we're actually going to use a battery powered 3 8 drive impact gun. Uh, I know most of you out there probably have air air impact guns which would probably be a little easier but for this purpose we're going to use a 3 8 so the first thing we're going to do is just loosen the cap screw on the suction manifold then we're going to come to the other side and remove this, this cap screw and go ahead and remove the four cap screws on the elbow After removing the cap screws with a pry bar, separate the two components. With the elbow removed, we can set it aside. Now we can completely remove the other cap screw, remove the suction manifold, slightly pry it apart for easier removal. Loosen the cap screw from the discharge manifold to the discharge elbow. Go to the opposite side, remove the other cap screw and the four cap screws on the discharge elbow. 
slightly pry the two components apart. Once the elbow is removed, we can go to the opposite side, remove the cap screw to remove the discharge manifold. Repeat the previous process for the opposite side. We are now ready to remove the outer chamber on one side. We're going to remove the two bottom cap screws and the two top cap screws first. We will remove the four through bolts that hold the leg brackets on. We can now remove the outer chamber. With the outer chamber removed, we will now remove one diaphragm assembly. This assembly may be tight. The assembly removed, remove the diaphragm bumper. We are ready to go to the opposite side to remove the opposite chamber. Remove the two top and two bottom most cap screws first and then the four cap screws that hold the leg brackets on. We are ready to pull the diaphragm rod assembly from the intermediate section. We can remove our plunger pin bushings. Turn the intermediate around, remove the opposite plunger pin bushing assembly. With our needle nose pliers, we're going to now remove our U-cup seals. Remove the four cap screws on our main air valve assembly. Set the air valve off to the side. Remove pilot valve and gasket. Remove our end caps from the air valve assembly. Gaskets, bumpers, pull the spool out. With a deep well socket we can remove the sleeve and o-ring assembly. Just simply push down on it. It should push out. Pull it out of the air valve casting and the air valve is completely disassembled. We're going to open our air end kit. This kit contains everything Sandpiper recommends to rebuild the air side of the pump. We're going to start with the air valve assembly. Set the sleeve up, install the six O-rings on the sleeve. We're going to put a light coating of grease on each O-ring. The grease we are using keeps O-rings from catching, binding, and cutting during installation. We also want to put a light coating of grease on the inside of the bore of the valve body. Install the sleeve into the body. This is self-aligning. Once the sleeve is in, you can set a bumper on top end cap gasket and an end cap. Make sure to line up the pilot passage in the end cap. Install the cap screws and run them down tight. Flip the assembly over, install the spool. Do not force the spool. Wiggle or twist until it falls into place. Install the other bumper gasket, end cap, and the remaining cap screws. We are now going to pre-assemble our pilot valve plunger pins. Install the o-ring onto the actuator plunger pins. Lubricate the pins. Slide the pin into the bushing 
sliding back and forth several times to help lubricate the bushing. Checking the inner chambers for any sharp edges that may have occurred during wear and tear of your unit. Use crocus cloth or emery paper to dress up any radiuses. Inspect the diaphragm rod bushing for wear. We are now going to install the U-cup seals with the lip of the seal pointing towards the diaphragm. Lightly grease the U-cup seal and bearing. While any lubricant can be used, hydrocarbon should never be used when installing EPDM parts. We are ready to install the plunger pin and bushing assembly. Flip the intermediate over. Install the opposite U-cup seal. Lubricate the seal and inner bearing as well. Install the other plunger pin and bushing assembly. We are ready to assemble our diaphragm assemblies. Our serial number plate always is in the upright direction. We're going to lubricate the main shaft. Light coat of grease on the main diaphragm shaft. We have already installed our diaphragm bumper. Slide the assembly into the intermediate housing. We are now ready to install one of the outer chambers. Make sure that the top of the chamber is aligned with the serial number plate. Line the holes in the diaphragm with the inner chamber. We are going to install the upper two and the lower two cap screws first that go into the blind holes of the outer chamber. These are the most difficult to line up, so these are the ones you want to install first. Get these four cap screws started. Get them up through the diaphragm. Start them into the casting. Once they are started, you can run them down. Slightly snug them into place. Now we can install our through bolts with our leg brackets. Once the leg brackets are in place, we can go ahead and tighten all eight cap screws using a cross pattern. Once the chamber is in place, flip the assembly over, install our second bumper and status seal. With the diaphragm bumper into place, Invert the diaphragm assembly, spin onto the shaft. And torque to manufacturer's specifications. When aligning the diaphragm bolt holes, always tighten to the next bolt hole. Never loosen. Once we've started the diaphragm, we install a pry bar underneath the inner plate. Make sure you get the pry bar far enough in to catch the inner plate, not the diaphragm. Invert the diaphragm assembly. Now we can do a final torquing to the diaphragm assembly to the shaft. Make sure the, the bolt holes in the diaphragm line up with the inner chamber. We are ready to install the second outer diaphragm chamber, making sure the flat valves hang in the lower position. Install the two uppermost cap screws that go into the blind hole, as well as the two lowermost cap screws that go into the blind hole in the castings, and then the two leg brackets with the through bolts is the last four cap screws to install. Once they're all installed, tighten all the hardware in a cross pattern. We're now ready to install our main air valve assembly. Now reaching in the intermediate, we need to push the plunger pins back out of the way so not to catch one or bend one. We install our 
pilot valve, make sure you center the shaft of the pilot valve, make sure the O-rings are lubricated. So we want to install our gasket, pilot valve assembly, our second gasket. Line up the passageway in the main air valve with the gasket in the pilot valve. We want to assemble this, stack this up together as an assembly and install it into the intermediate of the pump. Install the four cap screws, tighten into place. We are now ready to install our discharge elbow. With our flaps all adjusted, install the four cap screws in the discharge flange. Lightly grease the seal so it slides into the discharge elbow. Make sure you line the bolt holes up with each other. Just start the cap screw, just get it into place. You don't want to tighten this down yet. We are now ready to install the opposite elbow. Work it onto the seal, install the four cap screws. Make sure nothing's in a bind, just get the cap screw started. Now we want to install the suction side. We're going to install the suction elbow. Install the four cap screws, just leave them loose. Lightly grease the seal for easier installation. Slide the manifold into place and start the cap screw to hold it into its location. Now we're going to install our opposite suction elbow and cap screw. Once everything is in place, we now want to use a cross pattern and tighten all suction and discharge elbows using a cross pattern. Once all cap screws are tightened, our assembly is completed. If doing a complete rebuild, refer to our wet end kit installation video. This concludes the air end kit rebuild of the HDF2. The items we replaced are items such as the main air sleeve and spool, the bumpers, gaskets. We also installed plunger pins, plunger bushings, new U cup seals, and inspected all the internal components to make sure everything was in very good condition. While the pumps are different in size and flow, the techniques used between the HDF2 and the HDF1 are very similar torquing of the diaphragms and setting of the flat valves. For more information on this rebuild, you can visit us on our website at sandpiperpump.com or contact us at the after sales support department at service.warrenrupp at idexcorp.com. Thank you.